Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. And in this JD Martinez swing analysis video, we are going to be going over how much we're gonna be answering some reader, reader questions. And it's these three right here. So how much of a dip in the swing is too much? Then we're gonna answer how can we get the same results from what we see in the cages to the games or transitioning BP swings to the games. And the last question we're gonna address is drills to keep hitters from dropping the hands. Just to let you know, in this video, I'll be skipping around a little bit. And so we'll, we'll kind of put in some JD Martinez analysis along with a couple other blog posts that I have that address a lot of these issues uh, and challenges <clears throat> um, that I will link to if you're watching this on only on YouTube, then I will link to if you go down below the video in the about us section and click the link there, you can be able to go over to the this blog post and get to those links themselves. Okay, so let's get started. How much of a dip in the swing is too much? So with JD Martinez, so I, I talked to my hitters about what's what I call the Goldilocks golden rule. And most of my hitters are pretty good about, they've heard that story before Goldilocks and the three bears. And I always reference if they haven't, the scene in the story where Goldilocks walks up to the, to the house, opens the doors in the kitchen, sees the three bowls of porridge sitting there on the kitchen table. One of them she tries is too hot, she doesn't like it. The next one she tries is too cold, she doesn't like it. The last one was just right, which happens to be the baby bear's porridge. So we talk about this Goldilocks golden rule a lot when I'm talking with my hitters and whether we're talking mechanics, whether we're talking mindset, swing intention, anything like that, we're talking about the Goldilocks golden rule. So the idea, when we're talking dipping the shoulder when it is too much, there is always the excessive, so if we're trouble with excessive uppercut. Now there's a lot out there. Uh, just talked this last week with a, with a group of people that were what I call ground ball lovers. They love teaching their hitters to hit ground balls and, and their big thing is I you know teach them to hit it hard on the ground and things like that, which is really nonsense when you start moving up the ladder of, of the level as the level gets harder. It really doesn't make much sense. And uh, I can put a couple links in the blog post of where you can look. I have a whole post on that, it's a, a massive post, but it has all the evidence that is, is right there and the math, the math says so. But an excessive uppercut, which these ground ball lovers don't like because they feel like it's it's increasing the strikeouts and all, a bunch of different stuff. But I actually beg to differ. I don't think, naturally, if you let a hitter swing, they're going to do a good job. My five-year-old, my four, when he was four, three, four years old, when I was tossing balls to him to hit, he would naturally try and get that barrel to match the plane of the pitch. So however I threw it, overhand, underhand, he would he would see that arc, he was swinging and missing a lot obviously in the beginning, but as he got a little bit better with it, uh, most kids naturally uncoached will try and like what JD Martinez is doing here, is you see him trying to match this plane. You can see the ball blurring in, you can see the catcher's gloves, you can see this line right here is the plane of the pitch is what I've referred to as that. At this level obviously the plane plane of the pitch is is coming down, not quite as down as you'd see a 45 mile per hour lollipop in Little League or anything, or a 65 mile an hour batting practice pitch that you'd see in the Home Run Derby. But you can see here, JD Martinez is doing a good job. You don't see his barrel drop super low down here, like we see a lot of hitters, a lot of young hitters. So that's the excessive uppercut there. That's the Goldilocks going in and seeing the porridge is too hot or too cold. That's that's too much of a dip. You're seeing him get more flat with that plane of the pitch. And this is one of the reasons I think last year after the home run derby, Aaron Judge had a hard time in the third quarter of the season is because his plane of the pitch changed. He had a great first half of the season that year, 2017. And then he changed that plane of the pitch to match the batting practice home run derby plane of the pitch. Maybe didn't figure it out or whatever it was and was trying to lift the ball, excessive uppercut. So he struggled that third quarter. And then the fourth quarter, he got back on it again. So we want to, we don't want to be too, we don't want to swing down. We don't want to have like this pronounced on film swing down. We can use swing down as a cue to help a hitter that's swinging up too much. Like Mike Trout says, I get on top of the ball or we've heard Alex Rodriguez and Albert Pujol say they swing down. Well, they don't swing down when we're looking at them on film, but they think mindset wise, that's their feel is to swing down so that they can protect their swings against an excessive uppercut. Okay. So we don't want, we don't want either of those. We don't want an excessive uppercut and we don't 
don't want an excessive swing down. We can again, we can use those two extremes to help us get the opposite. So again, if a hitter's swinging down, I'll tell my hitter to, to swing up. If a hitter's swinging up, we tell them to swing down, is we're trying to get them to match this plane of the pitch. We're trying to get them to level out their swing in relation to the plane of the pitch, not the ground. When I say level swing, I'm not talking with the ground, I'm talking about with the plane of the pitch. So that is what we call controlling the launch angles or controlling our verticals with hitters. So again, if a hitter, we're working in the cage and one of my hitters hits a ground ball, the next time they're thinking their intention swing intention is to lift the ball get the ball in the air okay what we should see is a line drive if we don't and we see them actually hit a pop fly then we tell them to get on top of the ball we start to swing that pendulum tighter and tighter until eventually we have that line drive swing and we're not excessively uh, dipping the barrel below the plane of the pitch. Now I have a post on this. I will again link it in the original blog post to this video, uh, but you can see here's Josh Donaldson. I think this was back in 2016, I wanna say. Could, uh, yeah, 16, I think he's still with the A's, 15 or 16. But you can see the shoulders, how they progress through the swing. So you can see the down shoulder angle from here. Uh, as he gets closer to landing, you're gonna see that down shoulder angle start to get more flat. Uh, you can see it landing here. He's still got a down shoulder angle, slight down, not quite as pronounced as over here in this, the upper right box, but you can see it starting to level off here. And then you're gonna see the shoulders dip. The shoulders have to dip in this in this position. And, and that dip, the, the amount of dip is gonna depend on the pitch height. So the higher the pitch, the less of the dip. The, the lower the pitch, the more of the dip. Just think of like a Mike Trout or even, even J.D. Martinez here. This pitch isn't, is it about his belt buckle or so or hip? You don't see a massive amount of dip with his shoulders here, as you would see if the ball was coming here and he was he was swinging at it, you'd see more of a dip in the shoulder. So I hope that answers that question. The next one is, how can we get the same results from what we see in the cage to the games? Now, the training there's a training principle called specificity. I come from a strength conditioning, a more corrective movement science background, and we operate based on this specificity principle. So the basically means the specificity or defined as is the principle of training that states that you do in the gym, uh, what you do in the gym should be relevant and appropriate to your desired outcome. So if you want a yoga type body, or if you wanna be more, more stretched out, you wanna have a stronger core, then, then yoga, Pilates are great ones. If you're not interested in putting a lot of weight on, you just wanna get more mobile, more stable, those are great great disciplines to go into. If, it, if it's strength, you, you're trying to put more weight on your on your body, as you can see here, this is a, I don't know if it's a fable, if it's true or whatnot, but it's a Milo of Crotone. Um, he, his body had to adapt and get stronger to the demands put on it by the growing bull. So the story goes, when Milo was younger, uh, he ended up being like a, a world-renowned Greek wrestler. He, he was like undefeated in like 56 matches and he was undefeated. Um, and I think there was some other tall tales associated with him. But when he was younger, he was told by his parents to, to take this young bull into town, walk, put it on his shoulder, walk it into town and feed it milk. So he would do this every day, he would feed it milk, but as he got older, or as he was doing this, the, the obviously the bull got bigger uh, and heavier, which made Milo get bigger and heavier. So how this applies to hitting in the cage when we're talking about taking a cage swing to the game is there's certain things and I'm not going to go into all the details because you can go to this and I'll again I'll link link to this post but you can go in here and I go over all the details all the really specific details of how to train correctly but I did want to go over touch on one doing rapid fire soft toss is probably the worst thing that you can do for a hitter and I understand that coaches want to build faster hands is what they say because you need fast hands in the swing well if you're using your spinal engine correctly, so if we're looking at JD Martinez's swing, if we take spinal engine correctly, so we're seeing the hitter show their numbers. You can see showing numbers right here. You can see the downward shoulder angle that we saw in Donaldson. You can see a slight down one, not quite as pronounced. At about the same spot, him and JD, Donaldson and JD Martinez are, are about the same. So about a six to eight degree down or eight to 10 degree down shoulder angle. That's part of it. So we need a side bend in the spine. We need to show the numbers. We need a protraction of the front scap, meaning the front shoulder pulls in and we need a retraction or hiding the hands of the back scap. So you see this back elbow peek out. So if we are 
are using and some other things that are in here we won't touch on in this video if we're using the spinal engine correctly the hands will naturally get faster we do not need to do rapid fire soft toss where you're rapid fire so each after each ball there's maybe a one or two second in between when each ball gets tossed to the hitter to swing and you're causing the hitter to to, to reload and swing reload and swing reload and swing really quickly and it and it doesn't really make sense because in a game you take one swing and then you're waiting for another maybe 10 to 20 seconds on the baseball field the big field probably more close to 20 seconds on the softball field fast pitch you're talking maybe 10 seconds 10 to 15 seconds between pitches and sometimes the hitter doesn't swing for a whole minute maybe they maybe they watch four balls go or three balls go by or they foul you know maybe they foul a ball off here and there but you might not swing every 10 to 50, uh, 15 to 20 seconds uh, it might take 30 seconds 45 seconds so it's one swing as hard as you can and then you have time to get ready again to do it again so your training specificity training should reflect that in the cage we're not talking about batting practice so throwing a ball every four to six seconds you need to take more time um, now i'm not saying oh well, you, well do i need to have my hitters do i need to take 30 seconds between pitches from just doing batting practice the practice will take forever it'll drag on no i'm not saying that what you can do is though instead of throwing a ball every four to six seconds, why not do eight to 10, eight to 12 seconds, take your time, get back, reload, and then throw another ball at your hitter. Instead of doing 10, 20 swing rounds, why not keep the round short to three to five? So the hitter doesn't get tired and create what we call a marathon swing, where you don't, if you, if you have to run a hundred meter sprint, you don't train like you would for a marathon, okay? You're sprinting, so that specificity principle comes back in. So you have to do sprinting work to train it. You don't do marathon training for a hundred meter sprint. It's the same thing in hitting. You're looking for a hundred percent intensity on each swing, so you allow the hitter not to get into that cardio zone where your marathon sessions, 15, 20 swing rounds, you shorten the rounds, get about eight to 10 seconds between pitches. So touching on that, that's what I would do. Make it harder in the cage. Again, that this article will go more into some of the things there on how to do that. But that's that's what you mainly want to do. And there's a post that address that I'll link to. So the last question: drills to keep hitters from dropping the hands. I love this one, and I have another post for this as well that I'll link to that has the actual drill that we use. Um, we use what's called react reactive neuromuscular training, uh, or RNT for short. And so we I took this from the training world or the corrective fitness world, and uh, basically what we do is we hook a, uh, what are great for this. I think in the drill video, I'm using regular regular resistance bands that you could get at Dick's, Sporting Goods, or Big Five, or whatever your, your local sporting goods store is. And we have them hold the, the strap in each hand, and then we have them step on the middle part of the band. So, uh, But a better band to use if you have Jaeger bands at home are perfect because they have straps, Velcro straps that strap around the wrist. And so now the player is free to hold the bat and not have to worry about holding the straps and the bat. Um, but you basically put those straps, those Jaeger band straps around the wrist, hands are free to hold the bat, and then you would step, the hitter would step on the middle part of the band. You gotta be careful with the Jaeger bands because they have a big metal, uh, it's metal, so you don't want that thing slipping out from under the foot and hitting them in the face. But basically, we got these bands that are pulling the hands down. And what reactive neuromuscular training does is it feeds the mistake, which is the hands dropping. And we want the hitter to, to resist that drop of the hands. Now, the hands are going to drop, but here's what we don't want. We don't want a drop and then a go forward. Okay, we don't want like what I, when we talk about with my hitters are like a right angle here, right? Uh, we don't want the right angle going on. We want both to happen at the same time. So we want the drop of the hand, say like a lower pitch as an example, because the hands have to drop to be able to get down there to reach, right? You can't have high hands and be able to hit that low pitch effectively. So the hands do need to drop, but they need to drop and move forward at the same time. Just to kind of clear up what I'm talking about, we, we look for this kind of Nike swoosh sign. Uh, it'll change depending on uh, middle in or middle third and outer third. So the arc of this is gonna change. So this would be more of like an outer third arc. You'd have more of this would be like a middle third arc and then this would be more like a inner third mark. The hands, we're not talking about nod the ball or any weird thing like that. 
at. That's not that's the swinging down thing we addressed that earlier. We don't want to swing down on the ball. We don't want to swing up on the ball. We want to get right in the middle. We want the hands to move down and forward at the same time, not down and then forward because we're we're killing time. This is a big time killer. Time to impact increases time to impact. We don't want to do that. So what those bands do for the hitters that by the time they get to landing, and of, of course, J.D. Martinez does a great job of, of not dropping his hands in this fashion where he's coming down and then forward. He does a great job. You can see his hands will come down. They're coming out of from that top of the this corner up here. His hands are coming down, but they're also coming forward, right? So down and forward, not just forward. That would be pushing the hands. We want down and forward at the same time. So the hands drop drill is very, very good using the RNT. Uh, I want to end on this video with the controlling our verticals. One last thing I wanted to talk about and what we want, what I want my hitters to do, we talked about matching that plane of the pitch. So the rule is, is that we want whatever this line is coming in, the height of this line. So this pitch plane line, whatever this line is, we want the barrel, we want the ball coming off the barrel matching the same line. So we want whatever height the ball's coming in, we want the, the height that stay the same of the ball coming off the bat. That's always our goal. You don't see JD Martinez doing that. You see his barrel though is staying pretty close to that line as he's hitting this he's getting under this a little bit but our goal our intention is to have the ball come off the bat the same height that it came in so again i tell my hitters in the cage that's our goal that's what we're trying to do and i'll even i'll tell them if they just rock one uh, gr you know great launch angle gonna be a homer double whatever i tell them hey i want that in the game but in the cage, I want you to get more disciplined at getting the ball to come off the bat the same height that it comes in. That is this video where we went over three questions from my readers. How much of a dip in the swing is too much? We went over how can we get the same results from what we see in the cage to the games? And then the last question was drills to keep hitters from dropping their hands. And again, if you're watching this just on YouTube, you can go to the link directly below this video in the About Us section or whatever YouTube's calling it now. Click that link. You'll go to this post and I'll have those links for you there. Thank you and make sure that we're, we're swinging smarter by moving better. The Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know that reducing ground balls and swing and miss strikeouts has less to do with hand path and more to do with knee action? Have you ever heard, finish taller to drive the ball you have to uppercut? Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that showed a reduction in ground balls of 27% and an increase in productive balls in the air of 24% over 200 swings without messing with hand path. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.